Well, it seems as though every FLW Tour event we have broadcast this year has included two or three or maybe sometimes as many as four sets of locks, which, of course, allow our contestants to move about freely. And here we are with our very first ever start event, which is the stepping stone of the FLW Tour. More on that a little bit later. And, well, what do you know? We're using locks to travel up and down the Arkansas River. Our headquarters today is Pine Bluff, Arkansas, and of course a few of our anglers are going to be fishing close to home there in the Pine Bluff Harbor, but many of them are going to fill up the gas tanks and head south about 50 or 60 miles. We always like to set the scene here. We started two days ago with 150 boaters and 150 non-boaters, or co-anglers we call them. We've narrowed the field now down to 10 on each side, and after today we will have a champion on our co-angler side and five boaters for the finals on the last day. Kelly Coble yeah. from Conway, yeah. Arkansas. We're looking at him right now in the front of the boat. He is looking pretty solid for tomorrow. Now, Kelly is one of those few who chose oh, yeah. to fish close by, and he's done really, really well and well all week long, staying right here in the Pine Bluff Harbor, which is, a, of course, where the boats are launched each and every day. Now, I said earlier, this is a stepping stone to the FLW Tour. We'll explain a little bit more about that as the day goes on. But getting a slot in the FLW Tour, that is a hard thing to do. Winning this tournament or the four previous EverStart tournaments in the division will earn you not only a good paycheck, but will also allow you to be one of the lucky ones and make the move up next year. Now, George Bowman, whom we see right here, is fishing downriver. He's maybe the favorite here on the river as well, and we have made contact with George right now. Oh, oh, come here, darling. All right. All right. All right. Hey. Hey, George, how's it going, man? Pretty good, huh? Great, now. <laughs> George, you didn't realize how much luck we bring these fishermen when man. we call Call any time. <laughs> we'll call you back a little bit later. Man, I tell you what, the fishing in the Arkansas River has been sort of amazing everybody this week. George, I guess you knew it was this good, though, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of in my backyard, you know. Yeah. Do you, do you think it being in your backyard is a, a is a big advantage? Is it sometimes a disadvantage? Well, sometimes it is. I, I, you know, you, you you sometimes you know too much, you know. Uh, this kind of this deal right here has been I've been looking at this all the year. Uh, I want a, a, probably the biggest payday I ever had come out of right here doing just what I'm doing and 88 and this thing grew up with moss all oh, just a year or two after that and this year is the first time that it's been where you could fish you know this particular pattern that i'm fishing uh -huh. and so back in april when i saw that this moss wasn't going to come i said boy i sure need to be in that tournament <laughs> George Bowman from Dumas, Arkansas, making it pretty plain to us why they call him the king of the Arkansas River. I'm Tommy Sanders along with Jerry McKinnis. We have got a great tournament lined up for you today. George Bowman may not run away with this thing. He's being pursued by some really fine anglers, including anglers. Stephen Browning, who won $100,000 on this river just a couple of years ago. Jerry, a good uh, tournament. You know, uh, everyone's always asking this, how do you get into the FLW? How yeah. do you qualify? The Everstart Series is one way you qualify. Now, some of our anglers uh, f already fish on the FLW, but there's a handful of them in there that are trying their darndest to do well here today and make it into next year's lineup. They are going to bear down. You're going to see some great fishing and a great weigh-in all during the next hour. The very first Everstart Challenge. Stay with us. It's part of the Walmart FLW Tour. Still ain't no big. Huh. I didn't do you much good that way. I couldn't reach him. He went way out on me there. Here's another one of our anglers fishing downriver, none other than Stephen Browning, who is a pretty well-established angler. But because of his experience on this river, well, he just couldn't let this event slip by, and he may be with us for the finals. There he is. But George Bowman, he just keeps pouring it on here, and it will be fun following this uh, this old timer around today because hopefully he's going to show us some things. All right, hey, come here to Papa. <coughs> Ain't that, that a birdie thing? Thank you. Hooks in the net again. That's all right. We can handle it. That's all right, baby doll. 
five fish May. limit. May have a new for, leader. For George Bowman, a new tournament leader and the weight, 18 pounds, two ounces, 18 two. Let's hear it for him, George. Sometimes things go your way, you know, and I look like everything that happened since yesterday is, has really went my way. And sometimes you'd be blessed, and I was really blessed today. We've covered, covered a couple of tournaments down here on the Arkansas River, and you are always the guy that everybody's looking out for, and it hadn't quite materialized, at least on the ones we covered, but this time uh, you're threatening to run away with this thing. Now, we like a little drama here when we do these TV shows. You're not going to blow this thing out, are you? Well, if they'll buy it, I will. <laughs> uh, you know, you're not going to hold back. You're not going to hold back. Well, let's see, let's see your personal style in action out there on the lake today. Let's take a look at the screen right now. Take a look at this. Get a load of this. Wow. Good job. That was my first fish. Yeah, good net job there, but you didn't let your net man catch any fish all day. <laughs> no, well, he tried hard. It was just kind of tough, tough fishing, and I'm fishing a, a technique that I've fished for years, and uh, I suppose he can do it, but there's not a lot, you know. Nothing like fishing in your own backyard, is it? Well, that, that's true, you know. I mean, I'm right there at home. And, uh, me and them old fish know one another. <laughs> You've caught a few of them before. You want to tell us a little bit more about the technique that you were using out there? Uh, yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Okay. You're going to keep us in a little suspense then. All right. Well, Kelly Coble will be with us for the finals. I can catch 18, 20 pounds fairly easy. As will Brian Thomas, who is pretty well excited about this whole format. Um, you're talking one-on-one. -on -one. You are communicating with the fishermen. Um, you're basically taking the audience and putting them in the boat with the fishermen, and, and no other fishing show has done that as far as uh, bringing the audience to the tournament. I've, uh, after winning the Redman All-American in Pine Bluff, Arkansas in 1996, it gave me the opportunity to become a full-time professional angler. Stephen Browning is in it, and he is no stranger to us, but Cody Bird, now he is a rookie with great, great expectations. Brandon and Sherry, they're my heart throb. Well, these four will really have to perform to give George Bowman a run for his money. I'm a ding-dong daddy from Doom. <laughs> The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Walmart. Always low prices, always Walmart. By Evinrude Intruder 150 with fixed fuel injection. By Uniroil, driving dependability home. And by Atlanta Lakes. The good things in life never really change. Boy, my phone rang off the wall last night. Did it? All that. Talking to your... People from home, my wife calls, you know, about 15 or 20 guys that friends of mine I fish with. And every one of them want to know how I'm doing, you know. They, half of them look it up on the internet. But right. then about half of them don't have a computer and they call and want to know, have to know every little detail. Well, four out of these five finalists know how the FLW works because they've seen it on TV. Now, Stephen Browning, he knows how it works because he has been here before and they're all very nervous, very excited. Like I said earlier, I had the best year I could ever ask for in, in the every start. And I'm looking forward to going on to the FLW tournament. It's just bigger and better. It's just one more step. I hope I can hang with them. Goodness. Well, Tommy, this is just like any other sport. When you throw the first pitch or you shoot the first basket or catch the first fish, the jitters will be gone. Till then, it's just a little bit nerve-wracking. Try to get me one on the buzz bait early and good. If I can get me about a five pounder, maybe two of them to start off. That's what I need. Inning number two, Kelly Coble from Conway, Arkansas. Well, Cody Bird's got a good plan. Those plans sometimes yeah. get sidetracked, as we know, but it's good to start with one like that. Just yeah, just catch two five pounders right off the bat. Nothing to it. Looks good on paper. <laughs>
Hey, these guys have got uh, 50, 60 miles to go, especially George Bowman. Uh, we're watching him take a few bonus casts here at the first lock. I think they have two locks to go through, and Tommy, they have to invest in about two hours to get down to the place where they want to go fishing. And absolutely, it's not a sure thing either. Those locks could be uh, held up for whatever reason. Oh, big, man. big barge in the lock can hold things up for a long time, and they, they really are risking not making it back in time for the weigh-in, which is disaster. And, of course, uh, when you can go to the lock, sit around there and wait to get in, and then catch a keeper, hey, boy, what a bonus. What a way to get your day started. You, you've, it's got to be downhill from there. The area that I was in yesterday, it didn't have any grass or or uh, the lily pads and stuff like that. So I'm going to go and and uh, and fish this other little area. I caught some good fish in it and uh, the Monday during practice. So I know there's some big fish that live there, and it's one of the places that I grew up fishing. So I'm real comfortable fishing and real familiar with it. I'm just. And it's a place that holds a lot of big fish, and I've caught a lot of big fish in years past. And I, you know, I know I'm going to have to catch them. Georgia's on too good of a too good of a deal down there, not to you know not to catch them again. So I know he'll catch them again, and so I've got to go got to go for the gusto. There's Kelly Coble. We see him in the Pine Bluff Harbor. Looks like with the fish on there. Go back to Steve Browning there. I think he's got everyone worried here. Everyone looks out for George Bowman, but Steve Browning has done it here and won $100,000, won the All-American here two years ago. You know, both of those guys, both Steve Browning and, and Bowman, have got to be creeping into these guys' minds all day long. They're wondering what those two guys are doing. Of course, that's the real secret is to figure out how to not let them creep into your mind. Sure. But, you know, it can change your whole uh, uh, plan for the day when you start worrying about... Uh, what somebody else is doing. Kelly Coble here is uh, not to be discounted. Kelly's from just up oh. the river in Conway, about three locks up there, and he, he fishes his river probably 50, 60 days a year. So, And he sure is confident about the pattern that he's got going on. And he's done well every, every doggone day. 15 inches that largemouth needs to be, and I guess he measured pretty well. 15 and a half, he said. And we're going to see some spotted bass, too. We'll, we'll talk about them as we go on. Dang, that looks like a big double stacker, too. I would have took a long time for us to lock this if he was, wasn't already through. Fishing is, is, is real tough up in the, up in the, the pool above us there. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like maybe, a, you know, you might be able to catch a, a 15, 16 pound limit out of there, but, but uh, my practice there was not good and, uh, you know, I, I was down here and I knew, you know, you've got, I, I knew you have to have a couple of those big bites, those five, six pound fish like George had yesterday. You know, like I, I was able to catch the first day to really, you know, to be able to have a, you know, a winning stringer. And, um, you know, there's the majority of the big fish are caught down in this lower pool, which is, you know, it's about a 65 mile run. So, you know, you just have to take your chances. You're real limited to the amount of time that you get a fish, but you just have to take your chances. Well, I tell you what, I seen one hit out there yesterday, and I told myself to put a trailer hook on. I did, and I cast at it, and I reeled it right up to the boat, and it knocked the back of the skirt off right at the boat. If I'd had it on, I'd have got him. He kept me from making the whole deal. Today, we're going to have it on there. Look at them hitting down there. Cody there was talking about trailer hooks, right? You know what? It, it just seems like hardly anybody fishes without trailer hooks anymore. It's so important when you're fishing with a spinnerbait. Uh, uh, and, 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 you know, it doesn't affect your bait any at all. And, 
and man, you you just catch 85% of the fish that hit it. There he is. Pretty good one. Real good. I don't think not as big as I thought. Spot may keep. I don't think so, but he might. Measure this spotted bass for Kentucky needs to be 14 inches. And just uh, right on cue when he got it halfway to the mm -hmm. boat, he Nine said, inches. not as big as I thought it was. Boy, Never God. fails. <laughs> Primarily, we've been fishing these banks because they've, they've had current on them. And the fish that get on these banks and that heavy current are here for one reason. I mean, they're here to feed. The, the current is so stiff. Um, you know, they're not up there just lounging in it because they've got to exert so much energy to, to hold themselves in the current. So they get up behind these big rocks down through here waiting for bait fish to get blown down by the current. Um, Pretty good explanation there of how current and fish work together. Right, and, and as you can see, many of these guys are fishing these jetties, which are just, um, uh, just rock banks that uh, uh, farm eddies up and down the river, and most of the time, the spotted bass are around these rock jetties. You have to get downstream a little bit where uh, George Bowman is at before you really start depending on it producing largemouth. I don't know if this may be George's boat right here. It's one of our downriver runners, Stephen Browning or George Bowman. And the local fisherman has the advantage, or does he? It's been a month. I fished almost all of September. Either in the river, or, and I, I only fished in here occasionally because I knew what I'd do in here if it was a, if the, everything was stayed like it was in there. So there wasn't any need in coming in here and doing a lot of practice in here. I, was, I pretty well know where these fish live and where they're you know where they'll be and what I need to do to, to catch them. And so I didn't practice a lot in here. I'd run in here every now and then and catch me a couple just to kind of psych myself and uh, usually get on out of here, keep people from seeing me. And uh, spent a lot of time in the river uh, on limit fish and found an awful lot of fish out there in the river, and I mean some really good fish, too. And they were bunched in three or four different places. And, and I just knew I could catch them any time because <laughs> I'd been catching them with current and without current. And, uh, of course, when the tournament started, that changed. I, I can go out there and catch a few fish, but I can't go out there and catch that in one place and catch them, just keep catching them like I could. But I, I was only had those for backup fish anyway. If these, uh, if these fish would bite, well, I didn't intend to uh, just use those river fish for backup fish anyway. This is Brian Thomas from Catawba, Kentucky, who, along with Stephen Browning, George Bowman, Kelly Coble, and Cody Bird, is trying to win the very first Ever Start Challenge. And you know what? I don't think we even mentioned that uh, yesterday was non-boater day. Yeah. And our non-boater champion was John Little, who hails from Hope, Arkansas. How about that $10,000 for John. Stephen Browning out there putting fish in the boat, although I understand that's probably... going to not measure that one there, Steve, right? This one, this one won't quite make it. Oh, man. Well, it's, uh, it's, a, it's the big day here. I know you've got a lot of things running through your mind. I don't know really where to start, what to ask you first. Uh, it's not exactly pouring down sheets of rain like it was two years ago, but that doesn't mean you can't do what you did once again. Well, uh, to be honest with you, Tommy, I wish it was. Uh, really? I, I'm, I've made the long run again. And, uh, you know, yesterday I fished. It was sunshiny, and I fished up in coal pile, and we was talking about the grass not being there. Right. And uh, today I'm fishing around a lot of grass, a lot of lily pads, and... Uh, you know, that, I, I really wish I had that day we had two years ago. Hey, Steve, this is a place you fished when you were a kid? We, this used to be, they used to have a campground here, Spores Bow. And uh, during spring break, me and all my buddies, we'd come down here and spend our spring break down here fishing. And, uh, you know, it's another one of those areas that I'm really familiar with. It's not a very big area, so I'm able to cover it in the, you know, in the amount of time I have down here. How do you fish for big fish as opposed to small fish? Well, really, you know, Jerry, a lot of guys' philosophy is, is to go out and, uh, you know, and catch a limit and then, then go try to catch a big one. 
and you know there, there's there's you know areas that that are going to hold big fish and this is one of them and uh you know my whole philosophy this week was if i could get me a couple of those i got one now no i don't yeah uh, golly i lost him no i didn't still on i think it was a root i got okay. all nervous okay oh, you, know, my God. And, you know you have to you have to really be mentally prepared to come out here and try to know that you're only going to get a few bites mm -hmm. and you got to be in the right areas and uh, like I said, I've been in the right areas. I just, I got them one day. I just hadn't been able to get them today. Here. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing you out there. Stephen Browning, uh, change locations once again. He's taking what a, a bright, chance. That's, what a bright young angler. I wish everyone who's interested in the sport of fishing and would like to know more about it could sit down for five minutes with Stephen Browning there. He could, They'd get pumped up. Well-spoken guy and so enthusiastic and so dedicated to the future of fishing. He, he really has his priorities straight. We're, we're going to see him more out there. Boy, that's a good one. Stay on there. Looks like that one is going to stay on there. What, what is he fishing there, Jerry? I, he uh, is fishing a tube bait. Sort of pitching it out there in little spots. Yeah. Huh? Uh, and, you know, a tube bait has really got popular. Um, um, well, you know, not just on the FLW tour, but for bass fishermen all over the country here during the last year or so. And uh, uh, Cody has jumped right on the bandwagon, hadn't he? He don't want my spinnerbait, does he? That was a nice bass. So that was about as that good was a fish good, a good I've seen, seen caught today. Second most heard phrase, stay on there. We yeah, right. hear that a lot. You think it's kind of delayed reaction on the hook set there? It was a little long, wasn't it? I kept seeing it twitch. I thought maybe it was falling off that limb. I got my heart pumping a little bit. You know, I know when you get into this, you really got to pay some dues. And I know not all mine are paid, but I felt like I paid some sleeping in trucks and driving all night to, so you don't have to pay motel costs and tripling up in motel rooms. It's been tough. All my fraternity brothers and friends, you know, they're all, and my family are just all super supportive. My fiance is just the best. I mean, she's the rock that whenever I'm down or having a bad, bad tournament, you know, she's always you know, you've done so much better and you're doing good and always there for support. I tell you what, there's a lot of young people, bright, really promising young people in this sport, and they're doing just, just what Brian's doing, paying those dues. And I tell you what, the reward in the end for some of them is going to be well worth it. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I, I would say that four out of our five here could be considered really youngsters. No offense, uh, uh, George Coleman. George, George is not that old a guy. We call him an old-timer. It's just compared to these other these competitors These other guys here. are in their early 20s, and, and uh, you know, I think Brian was explaining it pretty good. Uh, it's kind of tough Got going out there. You, you know, a, a minor league baseball player, uh, uh, a guy on the Nike tour, Tommy, uh, in, in golf, you know about that. They have a hard time of it, and, and some of them don't make it. Some of them just get wiped out over it, and many of these fishermen are going to be the same way. However, like you say, the uh, if you can get in the up there with Denny Breyer and David Fritz and so on, it's kind of worth it, I think. Didn't find any fish in the backwater areas. I'm primarily fishing the main river. Uh, most of my fish are all been Kentuckys. Fishing the way I'm fishing, I developed fishing the Ohio River. In the summertime, when the water gets clear, we do the same kind of things I'm doing now. A um, little bit smaller baits, but the fish are bigger here, and you can use bigger baits. My daddy always told me, dance with the one you brought to the party, so that's what I'm doing. The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Enjoy. By Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. By Fujifilm, you can see the future from here. And by Sitco, when it counts. Good fisherman and the angler of the year here in the Central Division of the Everstart Series, Cody Bird from Granbury, Texas. And uh, Cody, a bit of a slow start today. But uh, you got all day. You got a lot of time ahead of you. Yeah, uh, I'm not real worried right now because I'm doing better than I was yesterday at this time. And it seems like they're biting a little better later in the day here. You, for the most part, you got a little more fishing time than everybody else, especially the guys going to the Dumas, don't you? Maybe twice as much time. 
Yeah, I thought that'd be real good. I got in here real early, and I missed a good one on a spinnerbait right at the boat. And I thought I could pick me up a couple of nice ones this morning, but they just wasn't taking the bait real good. Cody, you know, I think I, I think it's great that you're in the position you're in here today in the top five. That that uh, is quite an accomplishment. But I don't think it's as big an accomplishment as to lead the points all year long and be the angler of the year in this in this series. Yeah, like I, I said yesterday, I practiced real hard. Like at the Kentucky Lake, I think I went three or four days without a keeper there, and I found my fish in the last ten minutes, the last day of the practice. And... uh. It worked out good. I weighed in uh, 28 pounds on two days on them and made the cut. As we've talked all along, this is kind of a stepping stone into the FLW, and you will use that next year and, and jump into the FLW? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm sure it'll be a learning experience, too, for a year or so, because those boys are pretty tough. You know, they do it for a living. It's hard work, but it's not as hard as picking up those rocks, right? I don't know. Sometimes my back, when we stay out here from daylight to dark, my old back feels like it is. <laughs> Cody Bird, this is first year outside of Texas fishing and, and done so well. He has, really, has, really, he really has. It, won't he be excited if, if he gets in all the FLWs next year? Uh, that will be a learning experience. It'll be a thrill for him. And not to say that he won't do well no, there, too. Absolutely. Oh, this is a good one. Come on, come on, fish. Oh, oh don't get it. Come. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. If I can get five, I can get them. Kelly Coble from Conway, Arkansas, and like a lot of the competitors here in the Everstart series, Kelly is uh, hanging on to his day job, and Kelly's day job is building school buses up there in Conway. I'll be darned. Yeah. Good old Kelly. Yeah. Well, Kelly is in a great spot out here, and, and incidentally, could yeah. him or... Uh, uh, Cody Bird possibly upset Steve Browning or George really? Bowman. Well, I don't know. We've seen some pretty good stuff happen right here in the spot, right here right. in the harbor. In the Pine Bluff Harbor, if you will remember, what was it, two years ago that uh, Steve Browning actually won the All-American sitting right here in the area where uh, Kelly's at? And Rick Clun caught the largest string of fish known to man <laughs> in, in a bass tournament. That's right, the famous Clun Hole, which is just down and to the right of where we see Kelly fishing right now. He don't need to be measured. Walmart FLW Tour and the very first ever start challenge. This is the Western Division Challenge, and we are on the Arkansas River, the backyard of this fellow right here, George Bowman. And this is a very important fishing tournament to a number of these guys. And we want to kind of explain that again, Tommy. Not only are they after uh, an actual purse, but they're after the opportunity to walk right into the FLW Tour, which is a very hard thing to do. And if you can win this tournament, Tommy, you're in there. That's right. The winner of this tournament or any of the four previous tournaments in their division or being one of the top ten point getters throughout the series. Here's Brian Thomas. Oh, it's a nice fish. Oh, nice Kentucky. Come here, dog. Easy, you. Easy. That's the ones I need right there. Spearbait just came out of his mouth. Fell out. Oh, thank you. Brian Thomas, a little bit of good luck there, and that never hurts when you're getting down in the final hours of a big tournament. Yeah, and you know, he's uh, continually catching these spotted bass, and they're not big, but God. I guess he's coming up with a good limit of fish, and uh, a limit that I bet you Steve Browning or Ooh. George Bowman, either one, <laughs> would love to have right the now. The two favorites going into this final day of the tournament, and the two guys who are struggling right now. And it's funny, it works out that way so many oh, times. Yeah. But 
But yeah, uh, you know, you, you're talking about two guys who have lots of options, though, because they know lots of places I to fly. fish. He finally got a hold of it there. And, and I guess that's really where it helps. Uh, <laughs> uh, some local knowledge really helps you. You have a lot of yeah, new places to go to when you when your old places go dry. Did that. I did that. Got plenty of time. I'll try to catch another. Stephen says, I did that. We know what he's yeah. talking about. It's a similar incident that happened two years ago in the All-American. I did that <laughs> same thing a couple years ago when I won the All-American. I, I caught a fish right, right, right off the bat on a, on a little area and I came back to it. with just a little bit to go in the tournament. With like 15 minutes to go in the tournament and caught, caught my last keeper. This is a place that I started this morning, caught one on the first cast. So what Steve's saying here is, it happened once and by gosh, it could happen again. Brian Thomas from Catawba, Kentucky is a real exciting young fisherman and, and Brian, I know you're excited and happy to be where you are right now in the final five here in the Everstart Challenge. Oh, yes, sir. You know, it's just a dream come true. Uh, just trying to put together a good pattern and stick with it, and so far it's holding out. We'll just have to see how things come down today. Yeah, numbers-wise, you're you're right on schedule. Just need some bigger fish, huh? I need a few bigger fish. Uh, it didn't seem like the bigger fish were biting today like they were yesterday. Uh, we had a little more wind yesterday than we do today, and I think that's kind of hurt me. I, I beat these fish up pretty good. But what you know, is your pattern? You said you're trying to put together a good pattern. What is it now? Uh, basically, I'm still fishing the wing dam. Uh, the, the cloud covers, cloud covers kind of helping us a little bit. Um, I'm just, there's a little bit of wind out here and I'm trying to find it and, and, and fish some wing dams that, that maybe have a little wind on them. Does current have anything to do or are you pretty much out of the current the places you're fishing? I tell you what, if the current was blowing, it helped me. If it's not, it really hadn't hurt me. Um, Why is that? It seems like to me when the current was really rolling really hard, uh, the fish that were in the current were there for one reason. They were there to feed. I mean, they weren't there to lose weight. So the, the, the fish in the current were very, very active. Um, the fish not in the current, you know, a lot of those fish have come on the trailer hook and maybe not quite as aggressive, but you're still able to catch them. So either way, it's been okay. Do you feel comfortable out there today? You know, I, I, you're not you're not really used to having a, a cameraman bug you all day long with your fishing. This has got to be kind of a first for you. It's been a little tough. Uh... I was very, very nervous this morning. I finally kind of started to settle down here. Um, I, had a, I got a great cameraman. He's kind of talking to me and coaching me a little bit, so uh, things are going okay. All right. If, if you should, things should turn out, you should win this tournament. What's the plan for the upcoming year, Brian? Winning this tournament, hopefully use, uh, use that winning as a, uh, on my portfolio, hopefully pick up some new sponsors and... Uh, Fish the FLW and hopefully keep on going. Another little channel right up here goes through them. Maybe some kind of little creek channel bend in here. Thank you, Lord. That's a good one. Boy, that's a nice one. Good fish the because of the persistence and the patience there. Cody Burge is fishing each one of those little stick-ups, those little pilings there. And that tube bait, uh, Tommy, is a little bit different than a worm. It's a little shorter. It is, it is hollow. It floats in the water a little bit different. And uh, 
I hope everybody paid attention to how carefully he did fish each one of those. Oh, son. This one feels decent. There you see it, another fish. Looked like he's going to land it there. Brian Thomas, who has done great today by sticking to his knitting, as they say. Same thing Cody Bird's doing. Stay consistent, and now he's become a contender in this tournament. And we keep talking about both Brian and Cody, but, hey, Kelly Coble is a contender here as well. He's had a great pattern all week long. We've got three guys now that could win this. It really needs to be sunny and hot, and they've been there for two months. They're on brush and logs in the harbor here. I could catch 18, 20 pounds fairly easy any given day. In weather, I think it might turn them on. Oh, oh man, this is a nice fish. Stay down, you dog. Not as good as what I thought he was. Well, that's the 11th time we've heard that today. <laughs> Fishermen are just optimists. When they get a hookup, they think it's going to be a big fish. And, you know, the reality comes when they get a little closer to the boat. Well, uh, Brian is certainly filling out a nice limit with spotted bass. I bet he didn't think he could win this tournament on just spots, but he may be the, the guy that's going to do it. Well, as you can see out there, George Bowman's got the hammer down, and he is headed for the house. George, can you hear us okay? Yeah. Okay. We want you to give us your take on the day and what happened out there. Uh, they just didn't bite. Caught a little old fish before I went in the lock this morning, up the first lock. Got down to the coal pile and got back there where I wanted to be. And everything just looked great. I fished as hard as I ever fished in my life and just caught one non-keeper back there. I don't know what happened. Knowing what you know now, maybe the, the format of starting over every day isn't, a, isn't such a good one, huh, George? Well, that's very true. <laughs> no, no, I wish that. But I don't, it wouldn't make a lot of difference anyway. Like I told my wife, we can't have a bad day today. No, that's, that, that that's absolutely right. $1,000, right. what do you say, you know? Yeah. Could be the headlines in the local papers. Bowman bombs out, and that's a shocker. But someone's going to be happy. Way in time is just ahead. Don't go away. They still love you. And hey, top five here, that ain't bad. Uh, hey, I told my wife last night, I said, we ain't going to have no bad tournament. No. <laughs> you had three great days to start out this tournament. A few tips, a few techniques from how you, how you do that well on the lake. Tell some of the folks out at home. I just put some old stuff together that, uh, you know, I've done before with a crankbait. And the reason I went with a crankbait is because I limited to about four hours of fishing time. And you, you could cover a lot of water with the crankbait. You know, it wasn't necessarily the best way to fish the, the cover, but uh, most efficient way to fish it. But anyway, I covered a lot of water and got around. And, and, and all for the last, all this month, every time I'd run in there, I'd catch me a couple of fish just for confidence, get out and go back to the river and, and had lots of fish in the river limit fish. But today I said I'm going to live there. I'm either going to, because in 30 minutes, I could catch 12, 13 pounds or, or so, you know, two or three real good fish. And so I just sat there and died. You know, they just never did fire. And, oh, well. Uh, We're sorry it didn't happen for you today, but you still got your fans and you've done pretty well anyway. Another big hand for George Bowman. George will ask you to take the back of the boat there, or the front as it may be. Well, we hate to see George go, but we got four more guys who are ready to go. Kelly Coble needs three pounds, six ounces in order to take the lead. Kelly Coble from Conway, Arkansas. He's only weighed in one fish so far. Kind of need to keep track of all the fish that everyone's weighed, the number that they've weighed in. Another Looking beautiful for... fish there. He needs three, three six. six. Three, we'll need six. another one. So this will be two fish he's weighing in now. Two fish. 
both alive and the weight. Four pounds, three ounces, four All three, right. a new leader. Kelly Coble is still in there, and he is your new leader. Kelly Coble from Conway, Arkansas. So now we take it back to Brian Thomas from Catawba, Kentucky. And Brian has got to have three pounds, four ounces. Three pounds, four ounces. For Brian to stay in the game here. Three, four. Brian's only weighed in two fish so far. It's a beautiful Kentucky spotted bass. Needs to weigh what? Three. Needs another one. All right, three, two four. Got to have three, four. Got to have three, four. Let's check the weight right here. Three, four. That's two fish he's weighing in and the weight. Make sure we get it just exactly right. Three pounds, six ounces. Uh, three, right. six. Brian Thomas is still in there. And he did it. Didn't waste any fish ounces doing it either. That's a thing to remember. Now, Stephen Browning has already weighed in three fish, but now he's got to come up with three pounds, four ounces in order to take the lead. Need three pounds, four ounces for Stephen Browning. He's weighed in three. Here weighed comes in three. fish number four. Stephen, the winner of the $100,000 All-American here, June before last. We're at the Pine Bluff Convention Center. Looking for three, four. Gonna need one more. This will be his limit fish. Oh. <laughs> this will be a five bass limit. And these two fish weigh in at four pounds, nine ounces, four nine. Stephen Browning takes the lead, ladies and gentlemen, and he's gonna sit on that for a while. Woo! A lot of guys hanging around in here today. They are hanging around. Cody Bird, two pounds, eight ounces. Cody has weighed in two fish so far. Cody Bird from Granbury, Texas. Stephen Browning, your leader, with seven pounds and 13 ounces. Seven thirteen for Stephen Browning. Cody Bird's got to have two pounds, eight ounces. Woo. That may do it right there. One fish and the weight, three pounds, two ounces, three, two. All right, there we go. We gotta say goodbye now to Stephen. That was a tournament limit. Stephen, come on out here. Let's have a big hand for Stephen Browning. Cody, keep your seat right there. I know you wanted to win it. Winning is the name of the game out here, but a great tournament. We wanna congratulate you on that. And I want you to speculate on a little bit. What a great time to be a young man like yourself and just embarking on a career of professional fishing. It just keeps getting better every year, doesn't it? It really does, Tommy. I mean, you know, uh, professional fishing, I, I've been in it now for three years, you know, full time, and uh, it just seems like it's getting better and better every morning that I wake up. One more hand for Stephen Browning. Stephen, thank you so much. Down to three now. Going back around to Kelly Coble. Three guys left. One of them's gonna win the Ranger boat, the Evan Rood fast strike engine. Kelly Coble could be one of them. He's weighed in three fish, and he now needs two pounds, five ounces. Two pounds, five ounces. Kelly, is that it? That's it, three fish? Oh, let's give him a hand. Well fought. Come out here, Kelly. You told us today, you knew the fish were there. They could be caught. Just whether or not they would bite today, and I guess they just didn't bite today, huh? Bite right today. I felt like I could catch them. Me and my uh, co-anglers have been catching plenty of fish, you know, for me to get a limit today, but... I caught three, and I had one fish that could have kept, got off, and uh, didn't get many more bites. I think through the, through the first three days of this tournament, I don't think anybody caught more pounds of fish than you did, Kelly. I think everyone would appreciate you sharing your technique, how you were fishing out there. I fished uh, logs and brush piles in the harbor. I, I hadn't been out of the harbor in four days. I've stayed right in there, fished from four to ten foot deep with a plastic worm and a crankbait a little bit. Not much. You spend a lot of time on the Arkansas River. For everyone at home, for everyone watching, give us your best river fishing tip, the best one you can think of. Just don't quit. Just keep throwing. I mean, just... Well, that's what he did this week. He never quit. Let's give a big hand for Kelly Coble right here. Good job, Kelly. We'll ask you to step back to the back. I mean, we're down to two. Down to two. Two anglers left, and one of them is going to be our champion. Cody Bird, right there. You see him. He's our leader with eight pounds, eight ounces. Cody has only weighed in three fish. Cody, you might want to see this. You want to come up and check this out. You may have to go back and get some more fish, but we, we want everybody up here close. I see Brian Thomas, who's got to have two pounds, two ounces in order to two, take the lead. Two to take the lead from Cody. What it's got to be. Oh. Let's just see. This is his limit fish and the weight. One fish, it's alive. 
and weighs one pound, five ounces, one five. Cody Bird is your champion. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a big hand. <laughs> Feels pretty good, doesn't it? First off, I'd just like to thank the good Lord for giving me the opportunity to be able to fish these tournaments. I'd like to thank my wife, Kathy. It's pretty exciting. I tell you what, you know, you told us yesterday that everybody at home was just going to go crazy. They were going to go ape when they told when you told them you made it into the final five. I kind of like to be around when you make that phone call to back to Texas, back to Granbury, Texas, right here in a minute. Don't you think they're going to go crazy? She will. <laughs> Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Chevy, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks. By Everstart, the name says it all. By Spider Wire, Super Mono, the meanest monofilament ever made. And by American Camper, the leader in family camping fun. Cody Bird caught five very important fish today, but how about that last one off the old pier? And Man, that has to be our Fuji flashback for the day. Even going into this, everybody, me included, maybe you included too, thought this might boil down to a shootout between you and George Bowman. But uh, like George said, it's fishing. You never know what's going to happen out there. That's very true, Tommy. You know, uh, George and I had the same, uh, pretty much the same game plan. Make a big long run, get in the backwaters, and try to catch, you know, a couple, two or three of those big bass. And uh, you know, like George today, my big fish just never did turn on today. I thought I could go down and, you know, if I could get just two or three of those good bites, I could weigh in a pretty good, pretty good stringer of fish, but I just never did get the big bite. And you absolutely had to commit to that to make that run today. There was no uh, plan B, no backup plan. You, you were committed to that. Really and truly you do. Anytime that you go down, I was fishing just a couple of real small areas, so, you know, it, 